decided to do a quick live about interactive layouts and the progress photos in project control. So I will explain that inside Power BI. You will know that it's an amazing feature. It's very powerful and it can help your work uh, tremendously. And if you have been following me and you have just joined me right now, you know what to do. You can introduce yourself in the comments section. Tell us what you do and where you are from so others can know about you as well. And good evening or good morning. It depends on where you are in the world right now. We will do a quick tutorial about how you can connect your project layout and the progress photos with your comprehensive project control model. All right, and I have talked about it on few occasions in the past, but today I'm gonna really take my time to explain all features and how it can benefit us in project control, right? And career, of course. And uh, if you have just joined me right now, yes, I can see uh, Muhammad. Hi, Muhammad from India. It's so good to have you. And uh, Joseph, hi Joseph, is a planning engineer. Hi Abit, joining us from Saudi and good luck with your job search. Hi Kaleem, good evening. All right, so it's, um, okay, we have also Mahish. All right, so if you have just joined me right now, first of all, introduce yourself in the comments section. Tell us what you do and where you are from so others can know about you as well. Manish is a manager from India, and we have also uh, Puthia. Good evening. Hi. We have also Shailish. A good evening, Sayed. Irfan from India. Um, Stepanos from Indonesia. Mahish Project Control. Hossam from Algeria. Mushtaba from the US. Sadok, hi. Thank you very much, Sadok. Hi, Hussein. Hello. Basant is a Project Control Manager. Ashish from Ireland. We have also Munsuru from the US and Tipu from India. It's a very, very early in the US right now. And Mahish from India. Hi, Shadab from Saudi. Daniel, project engineer. Hi, Rohit. Jiminel, Agus, um, Atish, Omama, Russell, Lazarus. Hi, also, I think we have more people than expected because I did not schedule this live in advance. I just showed up and I decided to do a quick tutorial about how Power BI can benefit us in project control. I have been doing the, a series of live and the tutorials, of course, but today I wanted to um, talk specifically about how you can connect your project layout and the progress photos with your project control model. We're going to discuss the advantages, disadvantages, and how it can help us in project control. And if you have any questions, you can write them in the comments section. And at the end of the tutorial, I'm going to go over all questions and answer them one by one. Right, so that's what I talked about. I have my project layout and it doesn't have to be a building. It can be anything you want, right? It can be your project. But for simplicity, I wanted to use a building layout. That's my progress photos. And I have 
you know, I chose here to show some indicators. It's only a demo. You can show whatever you want. Literally, you can show whatever you want. If you have been following me, you know that I um, I show and I build many visualizations for different purposes, and I have been explaining these purposes for for a while right now. So you can check my YouTube channel, you can check my LinkedIn posts history, and you will learn all of that. So I just wanted to show a few elements for demonstration, but you can show whatever you want. And I um, that's my project layout, and I can choose to go for floor one, and the indicators will be updated. I know that the block work is in progress. You can go to the second floor. You see the progress photo uh, on that at that floor, and also you will see the indicators updated. At any point, you can change the date, of course, to recall the information. Okay, on that data date. I do that with a click of a button without any hustle. I do not import XER files to find the information that I need. I did not open 10 different Excel sheets. I did not apply formulas. I do not use configuration. I do not have to worry about Excel formulas errors or uh, how the calculations are processed because everything is like it's a machine, right? So the machine is doing the work for me. And third floor, I have the same information. You know, formatting is done as well. But how can this help us? And I'm going to give you a tip at the end about how you can do that in your project. Of course, I cannot teach the Power BI from scratch. But if you have uh, been using it for a while, and I'm going to give you a tip how to do that. So first of all, the first benefit is it looks amazing. You like it or not, it is not always about adding the value. Of course, it's valuable, and you know that. But it is also about your reputation, how you represent yourself, and how you represent your work. So if you are in a meeting, in a progress meeting with key decision makers, imagine yourself that you are walking them through the project and in this way, in this seamless way, a hyper interactive, accurate report. How many planning engineers do you know who can do that? This is something that will help you stand out for sure. And I have said before on few occasions, it in, in today's market, it's about what you are good at, what you are relatively good at, not what you are good at. So you, you find the ways to stand out from the crowd. That's one way, of course. And it will help you also answer any questions. So if someone said, like, okay, so, you know, for the third floor, I know the MEP, I know the masonry is in delay. So what about it? You can click on masonry and you can have the indicators updated. Okay, so that's one way. And you, you answer all questions. Like, whenever someone asks a question, you can, you know, like, answer the question um, within seconds and with a click of a button. So this is pretty much what we are trying to do here. The second benefit is... We respond well to visualizations. Okay, So imagine that you have a table, just a plain table, that will show you the same information, but in a tabular format. You're going to see everything. You're going to know everything, right? But if you look at the project layout, that's my experience. Yours might be different, but I think you're going to maybe resonate with me if you are a practitioner and if you have been in the construction industry for some time. Um, you know, if you list like certain, lay uh, certain areas in the project, this is what you see and this is what you will respond to. Sometimes information are hidden on purpose sometimes for maybe someone has an agenda. It happens, right? You like it or not. And sometimes it's uh, maybe by mistake, right? But when you see the layout, it will trigger um, more flags. It will trigger your attention. 
to look for areas, solutions, investigate problems, you know, whatever you want to do. So when I see the layout, I might be inspired. All right, so what about the roof? Let's go to the roof and have a discussion about it. This is something that will not be readily available, right? When you present or report your work in the traditional way. That's my experience. And it's all logical, by the way. And you're going to maybe look inside the floor and see, oh, what about concrete? What about block work? What about foundations, right? And sometimes you have a larger project phases, even buildings, right? So you're going to have this mentality when you go over the analytics of your project. Okay, so that's the second benefit. And everything is in one layout. So can you imagine you are performing interactive reporting? The problem with the static reporting is you are restricted with what you see in front of you. So imagine this is a static reporting, which is 99%, 99.9% of planning engineers do. So th this space is exclusive and has been occupied for, let's say, first floor only. But you, you know, when you have interactive dashboards, not only it's effective, but you can also optimize the space because I'm using the same space and the same layout to see the second floor and third floor. You know that so it's also space optimization. You cannot show everything in the project and whatever you want to do and investigate in a static way. It's just, it, you know, I did not find a way to do that. So feel free to share your uh, maybe method if you have come up with a solution um, to show everything, to raise all alarms um, in a static way in the project, especially if it's a larger project for sure. You know, I, I'm, because I think uh, most of us work in larger projects. And um, everything boils down to data analytics. It's the art of managing huge sets of data um, in a way that will produce effective results and um, meaning and value to our work, right? The problem with project control nowadays, and that's my mission, you know, if you have been following me, and I'm sure many of you, uh, do because that's how you got notified of the live event and that's how you joined me right now. If you have been following me for a while, I share the struggles of planning engineers and the project control market. I, I, I genuinely believe that this has to stop at some point because it got, it got us nowhere. You know, we know that planning engineers do not deliver the expected value in their projects. We just, we know about it, but we do not talk about it. Maybe because we did not have tools and methods and knowledge to approach the problem and uh, solve it, right? But this is something that maybe will help you do that. You know, what we are trying to do is, or the, 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 the problem came from our mindset. Uh, planning engineers are conditioned from day one to focus on preparing the progress reports. Take your time, take two or three days to prepare a report, but this has to stop. You know, Power BI allows you to complete your reports on autopilot within seconds because it's a model, um, right? And... Um, um, you know, we have many other benefits as well. And the second uh, struggle or the second problem is we have this mindset that we need to operate with different modules. One module for the baseline, one module for each schedule update. So if I'm having 10 schedule updates, I'm going to have 10 different modules to work with and activity codes, resources assignments, right um all of that you know so we tend to navigate and do our work based on this mindset so i'm gonna refer to the activity code and extract the planned value uh, values from the baseline then i'm gonna compare it with the actual data of a specific schedule update that um i have to import you know that's 
how we approach the project control right now. And this is so ineffective. What we need to do is we build a model that will allow all modules to talk to each other in a seamless way. So for example, that's my project layout. For some of you, it might be a separate module. Progress photos can be a separate module. So I connected both, right? And I have the planned values, early and delayed. That's a separate module, the baseline module. Actual percentage on a specific data date, that's another module. You got my point here, right? And maybe you have another upgraded module where you have calculations, like calculate the SPI or calculate variance. Some of the indicators are not readily available in Promavera. You have to perform the calculations and execute the mathematical um, operations, you know, on weekly or uh, periodic basis based on, you know, when your schedule update is due. So you connect everything, right? So the list of activities in the baseline will talk to the data from each schedule update and activity codes as well. All right. So how you how you can do that? How you can um, you know connect the project layout with the progress photos? For the project layout, there is no visualization built in in Power BI right now. Okay, so you, I use Synoptic tool. Okay, uh, it's a bit, you can search maybe Google or YouTube about how you can use a Synoptic tool and uh, connect it to your model. Okay, uh, for the progress photos, it's a bit tricky because also we don't have um, built in visualization for the same. Power BI does not understand the photos in a dynamic way. You can insert a photo, but to connect it with a model and have an interactive analysis, Power BI does not comprehend that. So we have to work around. We need to change the binary to image, you know? And, uh, 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 you know, so th this might seem a bit advanced, but as I said, I cannot explain Power BI in one live session, okay? So if you have been using Power BI for a while, then you can follow along what I'm saying, you know, and if you don't uh, understand a specific step, you can search Google or YouTube and then maybe educate yourself. So we, we're going to store all progress photos um, in a folder and you're going to establish a new connection from that folder. Then invoke the function that we created uh, at the beginning. Um, okay. And, um, uh, and you can write a script. If you go to the post description or the description of this live, if you go above and you see the description, I, I already wrote the script. So you can copy the script and paste it in your you know code area. And then, uh, yeah, you can just revise. You know, it's going to work like um, as another part in the model, you can, can update your model and you're gonna refresh your relationships. And this is everything in a nutshell, okay? It can look amazing. It can um, help you a lot in your reporting and the way you stand out for sure. And by the way, if you wanna update uh, this information on the right side, like maybe add indicators, you can, add, you can do that within seconds, with a click of a button, drag and drop, okay? Um, because it's one model, as I mentioned. So everything is talking to each other. We do not have to do everything the traditional way uh, because it's so ineffective, it's time consuming. Um, it will not help us get where we wanna be, okay? And also while we are at it, Maybe we can go to a Gantt chart, you know, speaking about automation. Uh, with Power BI, you can also create automated Gantt chart. So that's, you can add all activities. You can add specific uh, categories or project areas. You can add any columns if you want. You can add budget total cost. You can add earned value cost. You can add whatever you want. And the whole Gantt chart will be updated automatically accordingly. So one model, as I mentioned, 
So that's one cool way to go about uh, reporting, you know, because if you think about it, you do your baseline, maybe you spend a month at the beginning of the project doing your baseline, but you spend, let's say, two years updating and reporting your progress. So this is where you show your value the most, right? Like during this period. So most of the time, like, you know, um, so that's why you have to focus on reporting skills and uh, progress reporting and analytics as the first priority, because this is where you show your work. That's what you will mostly do uh, for over the project life cycle, two or three years or whatever it might be. So I hope this live was uh, somewhat informative and it can inspire you about what we can achieve, where the problems come from. I think we have so many problems, by the way, in project control. I just uh, talked about one of them. You know, if you have been following me, you can check my blog post, uh, blog articles. You can check my posts. Like I talk about problems all the time. We have so many of them. Uh, many of them make sense and uh, they are vital to the project success as well. So I talked only about one problem. Uh, all right, and how we can enhance our reporting, but we have so many problems. I can, you know, I do not want to take longer in this live because I wanted to um, make it quick and to the point. And also I want to take some time to answer questions, uh, but I can talk the whole night about, you know, project control problems. And I'm sure you can agree with me on that because that's, we can look at the results. Most of our projects, are completed late and over budget. So it does not sur surprise, you know, if we are happy with the tools we have, if we are happy with what we are doing, I am sure that we could have been in a better situation, but it is not the case. So let's say take some of the questions. Mm, okay. Uh, we have uh, people from Somalia, Philippines as well joined us, Iran, uh, Pakistan, and uh, Chad, Ghana, Nigeria, Malaysia, interesting, Iraq, Tunisia, Bahrain, You know, that's amazing how we can all connect with each other at the same time. It's really impressive. Uh, so we can communicate at the same time right now. All right. So um, I know um, that not many people have questions right now. Uh, percent. If we do not have a 3D model, can we add the pictures also? Yes. You know, and I know it looks cool. Yes. You can have a just normal image, you know. You can like have your, uh, you can take the project layout, a snapshot from your uh, contract documents or contract drawings. You just need the photo. That's it. So I know it looks like 3D model the way um, it looks interactive and the way it looks but it is not 3D model. It is just normal photo, but it has been configured and customized to meet my needs. And um, yeah, I mean, connected with the model and identify project areas. I know that it, it, it looks confusing, uh, but the process is not really that hard. And as I mentioned, you can uh, check Synoptic tool if you want to really do that uh, in your work. Hi, Elias. Adding layout for horizontal project. You know, that's what I maybe you 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 ask it the question before I mentioned so. So you I mentioned the tool, synoptic tool, and also you can you don't need 3D model, you need the photo itself, and you can connect it right away. You know, I'm really I'm I'm very practical guy. I like to do the best I can 
with with whatever I have, you know, like uh, I do not tend to make it complicated. Even my back end in Power BI, you will be surprised that I try to make it um, simple and to the point, you know, I do not want to uh, complicate things. You know, that's my attitude. Um, I'm just gonna go over the comments quickly. I hope that I did not miss any questions. And maybe you, if you have just joined me right now, you joined me late. Of course, first of all, you can watch the recording anytime. It it is located in my profile, and uh, you can introduce yourself in the comments section the way everyone else did and also you can ask any questions and i'm gonna answer them we have um, people from botswana as well From Shahid, I have MBA, which of course is better for me in construction, but you did not mention which uh, path you want to pursue. Planning, if planning, then first of all, focus on learning how to get work done. Don't worry about reading or uh, uh, or certificates right now, just to focus on how to develop a baseline, how to use Promovera effectively how to prepare a progress curve, how to use Power BI, how to perform a daily analysis. Forget about certifications right now. When you reach the next level, maybe you can look at certificates, for example. We have a question from Kishore. Hi, good evening. Do you have a full course? Yes, I have a comprehensive course. It explains uh, Power BI and data analytics as well. And um, it's all related to planning engineers and the project control. So, you know, it is not general Power BI course. It is specifically related on how to uh, apply Power BI and use it for project control purposes. The way I show you in, in every piece of content. We have Hoda from Iran also. Thanks for joining us. Sofian, if we are in the owner's position, it is sometimes rather difficult to control the plan versus actual progress made by the contractor, maybe because you don't have a system. That's why, you know, uh, as a as a best of practice, um, you want to have a fully developed baseline according to the best of practices. You want to cover the whole scope. Don't miss any significant scope. It's going to compromise your analysis, you know. Uh, so and also have it cost and resource loaded. We have done a detailed workshop about cost and resource loading. You can check it, you can see, watch it on my YouTube channel, okay? You can uh, search YouTube, Osama Saad, my name, and you're gonna see my channel. Uh, there are other tutorials as well, okay? So you can check the workshop recording, and I explained how you upload or load the schedule with cost and resources and how it is important for us to monitor the schedule because that's actually our waiting system and when you do the schedule update you're gonna see all variances you're gonna see where you are because you have done your waiting system the system is in place muzammil can we import our data from Promovera to Power BI? Yes and no. Okay. So yes, of course, you know, because everything I'm showing you is extracted from Promovera, right? Because everything you need can be captured from Promovera, by the way. All planned values, everything is there in Promovera. 
Power BI is a data analytics processor. Okay, it's just a tool to process the data and uh, gain insights and have a meaning about it. You know, so that's what I showed you right now. It's just one way. Uh, so back to your question, um, there is no native integration between Promovera and Power BI. Okay, you can't. There is a native integration between Promovera and Excel. That's how you export and import the back and forth between Promovera and Excel. I hope Oracle, by the way, does something about it because they can do it, right? Uh, because Excel is a Microsoft product. Power BI is a Microsoft product, but we know that Power BI is not that popular among the planning engineers yet, but we know the value right now, right? We understand the benefits. So hopefully, if it will pick up momentum, I, I feel that that's my opinion because they have done that with Excel because we use Excel, right, as well uh, for planning engineers. So it makes sense to have a native integration, right? Some planners use also Microsoft Project, so they have also connection. And uh, so maybe after some time, they're going to understand the benefits and the demands. So maybe they will establish a new connection. But right now, there is a connection between Promovera and Excel, native integration, built-in integration. So one way to get your data from Promovera is to have a third-party application like Excel. Excel has a native integration between Promovera and the Power BI. The second option is to connect to the database, not Promovera. Uh, so you connect it to ODBC, Open Database Connectivity. Okay, uh, it's a bit, um, you know, uh, tricky. Uh, it's not straightforward. Uh, it has some disadvantages. If you are willing to go through the disadvantages and weaknesses, it can work for you. So I don't see any more questions. So thank you for joining me in this quick live. And um, maybe you can tell me in the comments section, tell me about any topic that you have in mind that you want me to talk about in future events and live workshops. So yeah, we can maybe benefit someone out there. And I'm going to go over and see your comments. And if there is a demand, and the people vote for a specific topic, then we're going to do something about it. OK, thank you, Muzammil. You are welcome. Thank you very much for your kind words. And I appreciate everyone who is saying something positive. Uh, I appreciate it. But I do not want to maybe take some of your valuable time to go over all comments. Um, but I, I truly appreciate it. And yeah, this is it for today. And thank you again for coming over. And uh, maybe you can like, comment, and share the live so it can reach someone who needs help with this topic. And you can maybe inspire them. Bye-bye.